I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering and the topic of our today's discussion is the superheaters. In the last class, we have discussed about the boiler attachments and we have seen that superheaters are attached to the boiler for the efficient for its efficient operation. You know those superheaters are not the mandatory components still these components are attached to the boiler essentially for the efficient performance or efficient operation of the boiler. So, these are accessories what we have discussed in the last class. So, since these accessories like superheaters, reheaters you know are the components which directly affect the performance of the boiler, we need to look into this I mean the operation of superheaters and that is why in today's class we shall briefly discuss about this particular component. So, we have seen that uh, superheaters are basically in fact, we have discussed that superheaters are the high temperature heat transfer surfaces in the boiler. So, superheaters if we try to write superheaters and the superheaters take dry saturated steam as the input and provide superheated steam at the outlet. Superheaters are you know two types which are used in the boiler and those are convective superheater and radiant superheater. From the name itself we can understand that convective superheaters utilizes the convective superheaters utilize the convective mode of heat transfer to, to, to take heat from the flue gas and that heat is used to increase the temperature of the steam which is uh, circulated. On the other hand radiant superheaters utilize the radiative mode of heat transfer to increase the temperature of steam essentially to provide superheated steam. So, superheaters are basically you know uh, what we know till now superheaters are basically convective superheater and radiant superheaters. So, this this is the classification you know which is obtained depending on the mode of heat transfer. So, so this is basically obtained based on the modes of heat transfer. But we all are you know mechanical you know uh, engineering student, electrical engineering student, chemical engineering student. So, we have we all have studied about fluid mechanics. What you can understand that when you talk about convective mode of heat transfer. So, heat transfer is an important aspect therein. In addition to that particular aspect, the fluid mechanics also pl will play an important role. So, that is when you talk about convective heat transfer. So, it is a kind of conduct conduction plus advection. 
So, you know that advective transport, so fluid mechanics will play an important role. So, why not to look at the classification which would be based on the you know flow configuration. So, when we are talking about convective superheaters or radiant superheaters, heat transfer modes of heat transfer is the basic you know uh, criteria for which we have arrived at this uh, uh, sub classifications. But question is when there is flow of steam through the superheater and flue gas also will try to flow, uh, flue gas also will try to flow over the superheaters you know that depending on the flow configuration superheaters can be classified into again uh, two categories. So, one is so let say this is A. So, that is called counter flow type and number 2 is parallel flow type. So, this classification so, this classification is on the basis of flow direction. Right? Whether the flue gas and the steam these two streams are flowing in the same direction or opposite direction depending on that particular configuration flow direction we can classify superheaters into two sub you know classes one is counter flow type another is parallel flow type. So, this is B. So, you can understand the classification which you have listed over here under A that is based on the modes of heat transfer that is the fundamental one. Again B, so basically you know that uh, radiant superheater so long as the superheater type is radi you know radiant superheater this classif this particular sub classification I mean uh, the classification is not that much of you know uh, that much important. But while we are talking about convective superheaters, the flow direction will play an important role and based on the flow direction we can classify into these two sub classes that is counter flow type and parallel flow type. So, let us now look into what is the what is counter flow type and parallel flow type. So, now if we come to this particular case. So, if we write the counter flow type, counter flow type. So, you know that you all have studied counter flow heat exchanger in your heat transfer course. So, the principle is same basically as we have uh, identified that the hot flue gas stream and steam these two streams will flow in opposite to each other in the direction opposite to each other. So, counter flow type let us draw the schematic. So, you know that uh, this is counter flow type basically whether it is a convective superheater or radiative radiant superheater you know a number of coil tubes or number of coil 
coil tubes are there in this superheater. Okay. So, you can see that, uh, so this is the steam direction and this is the flue gas. So, this is flue gas and this is steam. So, this is the superheater and the superheater you know in this uh, arrangement you can understand that what is. So, you can understand the direction of steam is from right to left while the flue gas is flowing from left to right. So, these two streams are flowing in the direction opposite to each other and that is why the name counter flow is there. What is the advantage? So, advantage of this particular type of superheater is that. So, you can understand this superheater is hanging from the roof of the boiler. So, if the you know boiler there is I mean we have seen that a, boil, a roof is there and superheater is hanging from the roof. So, this is basically the inlet port and this is the outlet port and this is hanging from the roof of the boiler. And this particular coil is placed inside this you know uh, uh, in, the, in the confined space and flue gas is allowed to pass through the confined space. So, flue gas is flowing in this direction. So, this is the flue gas direction right. So, if you try to look at over here, so this is the flue gas direction and this is the stream direction. So, these two streams are flowing in the direction opposite to each other. Now, what is the advantage? Advantage is see, I mean when the flue gas is first approaching this superheater, here steam temperature is very high and also the that means, if we take this particular portion and if we draw over here. So, this is basically a tube and here the flue gas is first approaching. So, this portion is first to approach the incoming hot flue gas stream. So, the outer temperature of the tube is very high also steam is coming from the right to extreme right to that particular portion in a particular location. So, steam has already acquired some temperature. So, the flowing steam which is coming from the extreme right to that location already that steam has acquired temperature from the flowing flue gas, but particularly when that steam is coming over here inside temperature of steam is very high already while the outside temperature of tube also will be very high because this is the part which is first approaching the flue gas which is having high temperature. So, flue gas when flowing from extreme left to right it is exchanging heat and when the flue gas is reaching at the right side of this particular device that temperature is reduced. So, if we give a name so this is L 1. So, if if we if we give the name say this is L 1 and this is L 2. So, temperature of flue gas at L 1 is very high while temperature of flue gas at L 2 is le less relatively less, but steam temperature at L 2 is also less relatively, but at L 1 is high. So, that means, this temperature this particular portion of the superheater is prone to high temperature because the steam temperature inside temperature is very high. So, this is the steam flow. So, this is steam and the flue gas. So, tube inside and outside temperature at this particular location is very high and which may cause the damage of the tube. So, this is the disadvantage. So, before coming to the advantage let us first write the disadvantage. So, disadvantage is is that at L 1 tube inside and outside temperature is very high, 
very high and are much prone to damage right and prone to leakage much prone to damage that is material damage of course, I am writing material within bracket and chances are there that I mean leak will be much prone to leak as well. So, this is the disadvantage of this particular arrange arrangement right. What is the advantage? Definitely advantage is effectiveness is more this is quite you know uh, intuitive because we all have studied in the context of counter flow type heat exchanger effectiveness is more. So, following the similar argument we can say even in this particular case the counter flow type superheater superheaters are more effective than the parallel flow. So, this is the advantage, but the disadvantage, disadvantage is what we have all what we have already discussed. So, this particular aspect should also be taken into consideration while designing the counter flow type superheater. Next is parallel flow type. So, next is parallel flow type. So, let us draw the schematic. So, this is coils you know as I told you a number of coil tubes and so this is the steam direction. Okay. And so, this is the hot flue gas, flue gas. So, flue gas is flowing in this direction and steam is, so this is steam in and this is steam out. Okay. So, coils will you know this is one coil I have shown in the schematic. So, this particular coil is hanging from the roof of the boiler. Now, th this coil is placed inside a confined you know domain and flue gas is allowed to flow through that particular domain. And you can understand you know that uh, just if you look at this particular portion and again if you give name this is L 1 and this is L 2 right. So, if we look at this particular portion we can see that as if two streams are flowing in a direction parallel to each other. So, flue gas is flowing from left to right also steam is flowing from left to right. So, these two streams are flowing in a direction parallel to each other and that is why the name parallel flow is coming over here. Again let us look at the advantage and what are the disadvantages. So, you can quickly tell me first if we write the disadvantage, disadvantage is if we try to recall following the logic we have studied in the course heat transfer that the effectiveness of parallel flow heat exchanger is low as compared to the counter flow. So, I can straight away write that effectiveness is low as compared to that of the counter flow type. Okay. Then 
we need to look at the advantage or advantages. Now, if we compare counter flow vis a vis parallel flow, what we can see in the last one that is in the context of counter flow we have seen that when steam is coming from right side right you know uh, extreme right to the left. So, this particular portion I mean if we go back to the previous slide we have seen that this particular location in which the temperature of steam inside is very high also temperature of tube outside temperature of tube is also very high. So, it is because of this reason you know that material may damage and chances are there to have leak I mean leakage. But if we now consider this particular arrangement you know so this is the steam inlet. So, inner temperature of the you know tube so inner surface temperature of tube is not very high because steam temperature is not very high though this particular portion is first approaching the flue gas it is quite expected that the outside temperature of tube will be very high. But since the inner surface temperature is not that very that much high so you know that problem considering the I mean that that problem which will arise because of the because of the excessive temperature of the uh, tube material will not be there. So, you know that uh, uh, so I can write that uh, mat material damage due to high average temperature temperature of tube is less. So, chances of having material damage due to high average temperature of tube is very less. So, this is the advantage. Okay. Now, but question is you know that uh, our objective is to get superheated steam right. So, when steam is coming at section L 2 steam will be because these two streams are flowing in the same direction they will get time to have you know heat exchange, but question is when the steam is coming at section L 2 that time though steam has acquired temperature in the course of flow from the flue gas stream, but since flue gas has already lost temperature. So, when flue gas is coming in a section or in sections close to L 2 that time flue gas temperature is very less. So, you know that the temperature of stream which you will be getting at section L 2 is not very high. On the other hand if we go back to the counter flow type. So, in this case stream is always you know getting. So, when stream is coming at section L 1 that is the outlet port the stream temperature is very high. So, effectiveness is very high in this counter flow type, but that is not there in the parallel flow type, but on the other hand in the parallel flow type chances of having material damage due to high average temperature of tube tube surface is not very high. So, considering these two, so if we consider parallel flow type we have to compromise the efficiency or effectiveness of the superheater. On the other hand if we consider counter flow type although we may get high effectiveness, but still chance will be there that the material may damage. So, considering these two a special type which is neither purely parallel flow nor purely counter flow 
is considered so to attain you know relatively higher effectiveness and at the same time we can eliminate the problem of having material damage the, the you know uh, the possibility of having material damage. So, let us look into that particular configuration. So, configuration configuration showing partly parallel flow and partly counter flow. Okay. So, let us look into that particular configuration. Just schematic depiction we can see. So, you know this is the confined space in which that superheater coil will be placed. If we take now the superheater coil, so maybe this is the coil, one end of the coil. schematic only. So, only to make you understand the configuration. So, let me draw the, so this is the flue gas and so if I now try to give the arrow direction so, steam is coming in this direction So, you can understand so this is the you know l 2 and this is l 1. So, what we can see that this particular coil is suspended from the roof of the boiler. So, this is inlet steam in and that is steam out. Okay. So, what we can see and that flue gas is flowing in this direction. Okay. So, what we can see? So, this is if we look at this particular, so if we give one you know demarcating line. So, this line demarcates two different flow configurations. What are those? If we look at the right side of the of this line in this particular zone we can see that steam flow the flue gas is from left to right while steam is flowing from right to left. So, this is counter flow type. So, this is counter flow type. So, this is counter flow type while if we look at the left side of that demarcating line, we can see that the direction of steam flow, the steam is flowing also in this direction on in the in the upper part of the coil and also flue gas is also flowing in this direction. So, these two streams are flowing in the same direction that is from left to right and this particular configuration so, similarity with the parallel flow type. 
So, this is neither purely counter flow nor purely parallel flow, it is a combination of these two. And the main purpose of having this type of configuration is to get the advantage of high effectiveness and at times to reduce the possibility of having high average temperature of tube material. So, that the chances of having material damage can be prevented. So, this is the configuration. Okay. Next we will look at, so basically we have discussed about the classification which is uh, based on the modes of heat transfer that is the fundamental classification. Then we have discussed about the uh, discussed about classification based on the flow direction and we have discussed three different cases parallel flow, counter flow and combination of these two. Next is we will be discussing about third type that is this classification based on the horizontal or vertical type. So, basically whether the coil that we have seen if we go back to the you know previous three examples. So, coil is suspended from the roof of the boiler and it is placed in the confined chamber through which hot flue gas is flowing. If we go to the next one here also coil is suspended from the roof of the boiler and placed in the confined space through which flue gas is flowing. This one it is also the same, but little uh, different. So, that we can I mean we have discussed that it is uh, having both counter flow and parallel flow type arrangements. So, even in this case the entire coil is placed inside the confined chamber and the coil is suspended from the coil is suspend you know coil is suspended from the roof of the boiler. But in all these three cases you know that coil is vertical type as if coil is suspended from the roof and placed in the confined domain confined space wherein the flue gas will be flowing. So, whether the coil is in horizontal plane or in the vertical plane depending on this particular aspect the super the superheaters can be classified into two subclasses one is horizontal type another is vertical type. Let me tell you once again whether the coil is in the vertical plane or coil is in the horizontal plane depending on this particular aspect we can classify superheaters into two subclasses one is horizontal type that is coil or coils is or are in the horizontal plane. And vertical type, so this is in which coil or coils is or are placed in the vertical plane. Okay. So, this is the classification. Now, till now we have discussed parallel flow type, counter flow type and combination of these two all these are the examples of vertical type. So, coil is placed in the vertical plane. So, now let us look into horizontal. Uh, so, you vertical type basically coils are in the vertical plane and this is So, this is now if we go to the uh, you know one example. So, let us draw the horizontal superheater. Horizontal 
horizontal superheaters. So, if we draw the schematic, and so this is the example of vertical superheater you can understand so this is the vertical plane so, if we write, so this is the vertical plane So, this is vertical plane Now, whether it is steam in, say it is steam in and that is steam out So, this is the direction. Question is you know that any mechanical component or device after the you know after a long period will start malfunctioning because of several reasons. So, when steam is coming in and going out from this particular coil, so chances are there that condensate so, you know we need to have some tap. So, because of this particular arrangement the condensate which will be collected will remain there in this particular part in this particular part. So, if we, t if we give name A this is B. So, condensate at points A and B needs to be collected on a regular basis and because of this particular arrangement it is very difficult to collect condensate to drain out the condensate and in a in a normal way. So, what what is needed? We should have these taps. So, these are called tap. Collected and which required multiple taps are required. for drainage of condensate. So, this condensate should be collected on regular basis to have you know proper functioning of the superheater. If we need to collect condensate on regular basis, it is because of this particular arrangement it is not so easy to take it out, but if we since we need to take it we should have multiple taps. So, this is the disadvantage of this particular type. What is the advantage? So, this is the disadvantage. So, this is vertical type. Let me write here. So, this is not the horizontal type. I, I should write this is vertical type. Vertical superheaters superheater coil is in vertical plane right so this is the disadvantage advantage is advantage you also should mention that holding
holding this superheater coil is more easy and simple. because it is hanging from the roof of the boiler. So, this is vertical superheater. So, now let us briefly discuss about the horizontal superheater. So, horizontal superheater is horizontal superheater. So, this is very easy because let me write. So, superheater coil is in the horizontal plane. Okay. So, let us draw the schematic. Okay. And if we, so this is the So, this is the horizontal plane and superheater is placed right and here you know the, if you have only one tap. So, only one tap. So, tap tap to collect condensate. So, so, this is steam in and this is steam out, right. So, this is in the horizontal plane, but it is because of this horizontal plane you know that we can easily take the condensate out from the superheater and only through one tap. So, only one tap is sufficient to take the condensate. But disadvantage is this you know. So, basically advantage is only one tap is required to or I can write for the drainage of condensate. for the condensate. So, this is the adv advantage. Similarly, we also should know the disadvantages. Whether it see in case of the vertical superheaters holding is easy because coils are suspended from the roof of the you know boiler roof roof of the boiler. But in case of a horizontal superheater, stability is less. Number one, stability is less because the entire system is in the horizontal plane. And when there is flow of steam, we need to have proper support to keep the superheater in place. So, first of all, placing the superheater is very easy in case of a vertical superheater because we can, I mean, we can hang the superheater from the roof of the boiler, but in case of a horizontal superheater placing the superheater is not so easy because we need to keep it in the horizontal plane. Since through this coil steam will be flowing, so because of this flow there will be change in momentum. So, to keep that superheater in place we need to have proper support. So, stability is less and proper support is required. to keep the in place. 
but despite having these disadvantages since drainage is not that much difficult in the horizontal superheater horizontal super, horizontal superheaters are you know preferred over the vertical superheater because in case of the vertical superheaters drainage of the condensate is really a difficult task we need to have multiple tasks and that is also not an easy to have. So, despite having all this disadvantage that is stability is less we need to have proper arrangement to keep the separator in place, but still since the drainage is not that much difficult only one tap through one, using only one tap we can collect condensate horizontal superheaters are preferred over the vertical superheaters. So, to summarize today's discussion we have discussed about the superheater classification depicting the schematic diagram of different types of superheater we have discussed about their advantages and disadvantages. We have seen that fundamentally superheater can be classified based on the modes of heat transfer, but depending on the flow configuration their arrangement we also can classify into another sub categories. And finally, we will see that superheaters those superheaters are used to have superheated stream, but some cases uh, depending on the load of the boiler steam temperature at, at the exit of the superheater may decrease to, to accounting for to account for to account that particular aspect superheaters are sometimes connected in series, and that aspect we will discuss in the next class. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.